Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to discuss and show you how you can do a VLOOKUP in Python. So VLOOKUPs are very common, a very common function in Excel. And if those of you who do know VLOOKUPs quite well will know that essentially they're a join. So essentially they are joining two sets of data and what you're doing is you're calling back a particular reference point. You can do that in Python and today I'm gonna to show you how you can do it step-by-step -step instructions let's get started welcome ladies and gents so to get this one started we need to install Jupyter notebook on our machines so if you haven't already check out the video i'll put up on the screen right now and i will need you to start a fresh instance of Jupyter notebook in your browser and you'll want to start off with a blank cell right here so what we're going to do um, we're going to look at and merge two data sets, um, essentially two tables, and we're gonna do a VLOOKUP, taking, taking data from one table and adding it or appending it to a second data table. So let's have a look. So I've got two Excel files. I've got a customer file here. You can see I've got a customer ID, a customer name, and the customer age. Essentially what I wanna do is I need city. So I wanna identify which city these people live in. Now I have a second table, which is a geography table, and the geography table contains that data. So here you can see in the geography table, we have the customer ID, again, a common key field. We have city, and we also have country as well. We'll decide what to do with that. So essentially what I wanna do is I wanna add the city value and add it into the customer table here under what would be column D. So let's take a look how we do that. In Python, we're going to be using a function of pandas called pd.merge or df.merge. So let's take a look uh, going back into our instance of Jupyter Notebook. So first thing to do is import pandas as pd. Pandas is a popular library for handling data. Uh, and then we want to go insert cell below or you can press escape and b. And now what we want to do is create a data frame. So this would be our container for our first table. So instead of typing data frame one, we're gonna type, we're gonna abbreviate that to df1 equals pd.read underscore Excel. And then we're gonna enter the pathway where our Excel file is kept. So our Excel file is kept in a folder. I've got it right here in this folder. And if we take customers, and right click on customers and copy path. That will immediately take the path to this file. I'll go back into Jupyter and I want you to paste that into the circle round brackets. Now, <clears throat> before running this, Python will not be able to read this because these, these backslashes or these, these backslashes essentially are escape characters. So to handle pathways, you need to put an R, a letter R in front of the just outside the double quotation marks. Right, now that's done, escape and B, we're gonna enter a container for our second table, which is our geography table. Doing the same thing again. I'm gonna take the path, copy as path, and now I'm gonna paste that into here and add an R as well. And just to make sure it's all done, I'm gonna write a print statement, and the print statement is done. So if there's any error, this print statement won't work. Um, and what we're gonna do is go cell, run all. You can see the star, 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 and we're done, okay? So now we've got our data frame, our customer table loaded into DF1, our geography table loaded into DF2, and we're done with that. So what I wanna do next is I wanna print DF1, I wanna inspect it. So hit shift and enter to run a single cell you can now inspect our data frame. So here you can see we've got the 10 records for our customers, including the age. And along the left-hand side, we have an index. Now by default, pandas in Python always gives you an index. You can drop the index, but I think it's a good idea to keep it. And I'll show you why in a moment. And now what we're gonna do is print our DF2. So before we run BF2, we're just gonna print DF2 here. Um, and here we can see the data for our geography table. So you can see we've got the customer IDs, the cities, the countries, and we've got our index rank again. So now what do we wanna do? Again, remember, we want to add city to our customer table. So 
we're going to use a function called pdf.merge or pd.merge, similar thing. Um, and the merge function allows us to merge two data tables or two data frames into one. There is another function out there called pd.join, but this one is a lot easier to write and code. So I'm going to show you the pd.merge, df.merge function in this example. So I'm going to add a new cell and press B. And now what I want to do is I want to tenter our uh, an, a new data frame. We're now going to call this df3, and we're going to do df one dot merge, and we're going to merge um, df2, and we're going to merge on, and we're going to merge on our customer ID because our customer ID is the common field here. This is what's going to join both tables. And then I'm going to write comma, and then how we need to specify how we want to do the join. We're going to join. Uh, or we're going to do a left join. What does that mean? It basically means give me everything in the left table, which is DF1, and only those in the right table which match. So if it doesn't match, it won't turn up. But let's just have a look at how this turns out. So we can enter shift there, press DF3 here. I want to now print DF3 to see the results. And there we go. So here you can see we've got a new table, data frame free. We've got customer ID, customer name, age, and we've inherited city and country. Although I only needed city, we've inherited country as well. Now, if you want to change that, if you just want city, you can drop country. To do that, you need to enter another line of code. So we'll do that right now. And the way to do that is we write DF3. We're going to keep the same data frame equals df3.drop. So now we can choose what we want to drop. Uh, I'm going to drop, uh, we need to um, use the square brackets here. I'm going to drop country. And actually, I'm going to drop age as well. So we, you write country, comma, speech, uh, speech marks again, age. And then we need to wrap this in a circle round bracket. Now, why is that? Because df.drop, uh, we need to specify what it is where we're targeting here. So that needs to be in round brackets. And because we're specifying more than one column, we're dropping age and country. We need to write a list and lists can only be written in square brackets. So that should work. And then all we need to do is write axes equal to one. Um, uh, let's just change our round bracket, move that round bracket to here. So that wraps around the entire formula or the entire line of code. Axes 1 essentially means you have two axes in a data frame. You have axes 1, which is the columns running along the top, and axis 0 is the rows running along the bottom. So we want to target our columns. We're targeting country and age, which is in axes equals 1. So now if I uh, hit Shift and Enter, and then now we can inspect data frame 3 by typing in DF3 and Shift Enter, we can now see our end result. So, guys, I've showed you how to drop, how to join two data tables and how to drop certain feet, columns as well in the process. Now, if you like this, there is, I'll show you one more use case, this time something a bit more common. So pay, uh, follow me on this one. I'll give you an example. So if we go back to our, uh, our spreadsheets here, let's say in geography, I'll just open up geography real quick. Let's just say we're missing a few records here. So let's say we're missing 105. I'm going to delete that. And let's say we're missing 109 and 110. What does that mean? So let's have a look. So I'm going to save that. We've got far fewer records here now. And if we look at our customer table, we've still got the original 10. So what does that mean? Basically, it means that when I join this data, I'll just move that one here for you. When I join this data, or when I come to joining this data, we're going to see, we're only going to have a partial partial V lookup, if you like, or a partial join. So what do I mean by that? So if we look at Jack Williams, we're not going to return any city because there is no record for him here. And equally, George Gray and Emma Jackson are also going to miss any cities because there's nothing in this table. So let's run this and let's just see what, what result we get in, in Python. So if we go back to go back to our script, 
what I'm going to do is rerun everything because we've changed df2. So let's do cell run all. You can now see we've got a reduce count of records in df2. And when we do the join, what happens now is we return any ends. These are basically values which were not found. So basically the null values, essentially. So you can see Jack has nothing in terms of city and country. George has nothing and so does Emma. So what do we want to do with a scenario like this? This is quite a common scenario you might have. You might be joining two data sets and find that there is no real match between uh, a particular set of data. So you've got two options. The first option is to only take, well, to take everything as it is here, which is your view right here, or to only take those records or those customers that match. So what we mean by that is I only want everything in the right table that matches with the left. So if it doesn't match with the left table, I don't want it. So basically I want to drop Jack Williams, George and Emma from this query. So to do that, we just need to change the orientation here to right. So what does that mean? I want everything in the right table and only those in the left that match. So now if you run this particular cell, shift and enter, and then print it, we can now see we only return those specific values. So that's how we can deal with data sets which don't join in a clean manner. Um, and you've got a choice in, in Python how you want to handle it. So I'm going to stick with this. I like this. Um, we can now run uh, this cell again. And I want to drop um, age and country, country and age. And here you'll see I've dropped um, those, those two columns as well. So if we want to output this to a CSV, all we've got to do is type in another line of code. So we're going to type in df3 to underscore CSV, open bracket, give the file a name. So we're going to call it test output for vlookup, test output vlookup uh, dot CSV. We're going to put that in quotation marks. And then what we also want to do is set a rule on what we want to do with the index. So index is the number running along the left. If you want to drop the index, you just write index equals false. And now if we run this, well, before we run this, we just write a print statement. Just confirm that everything's done. Uh, so now if we do shift enter and shift enter, our print statement should now be done. Let's inspect the file and take a look. So here guys, you can see the output test output for your lookup. If we now open that up, we can now see that we've got the desired output that we wanted. We've got customer ID, customer name, and we've got our city value as well. So guys, hope you've enjoyed this one. It's a really quick tutorial on how to do a VLOOKUP. If you're familiar with the VLOOKUP in Excel, then learning VLOOKUP in Python should be a doddle, should be, shouldn't be a complex learning, uh, learning exercise. In the next video, uh, please subscribe because in the next video, we're going to look at pivot tables in, Excel, in Python. And this time, I'm going to show you how you can do a pivot table using pandas as well. It's another really core function. Uh, if you're ever merging and working with different data sets, you'll want to learn how to do pivot tables in Python. So we'll cover that in the next session and more. So guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned. See you in the next one.